What is up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Um, I haven't really made a video in a while and today I thought I would take some time to explain why that is, what's been going on, and also uh, tell you guys some exciting news. So let's get into it. All right, so the reason why I haven't really made a video in a while, um, I've kind of been uploading backlog videos, is because I actually sold the F30. The reason I sold it was kind of impulsive. Um, it's, it's a really, this whole story that I'm about to get into with you guys, but basically I traded the F30 in and got a different car, and my intention was to continue modding that vehicle on the channel um, for you guys. So what I actually traded the F30 in for was a, 2014 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited. Um, weird flip, I know, but for some reason I've been seeing them around and I thought that it would be a really cool project idea as well as I'd never, I'd never driven a Jeep. I'd never driven something that big or like an off-roading vehicle. And I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos of people that had Jeeps and it looked, it looked fun. So I'll throw some pictures of the Jeep that I found. It was, um, it was a Sahara, so it was kind of like mid-level trim. It was a six-speed manual, which was awesome. I didn't even know they made manual Jeeps, so when I found that, that was really cool. And I really liked the color and the spec that it had. It had the sound system. Again, the six-speed manual was a really cool color, and I loved the 18-inch 18 wheel, 18 wheels that came on it. So I ended up buying that and trading in my F30. And the funny thing is that the salesman that sold me the Jeep and did the trade actually really liked the F30, and he ended up buying it himself. Um, so that was cool. At least the car went to somebody that liked it and thought it was uh, thought it was cool, and it wasn't just put to auction or something like that. So, like I said, my intention with the Jeep was to modify it on the channel and kind of show you guys um, what I was doing. And I bought a lot of stuff really quickly, and I ended up doing a lot of projects really quickly within the first two weeks of owning it. And for some reason, I didn't film it. I don't know what was going on at that time. Um, I think I was dealing with some work-life stress, personal life stress and things like that, but I ended up not really filming anything, which was the intention of the Jeep. Um, so I'll, again, I'll put up some pictures of what I had done, but when I originally got it, um, some of the first things that I did was throw a head unit in it. I put a two-inch lift kit on it. I changed the exhaust. I actually painted the whole headliner of the, uh, of the removable top because when you get in there white, and it looks like a plastic cooler. So I actually plastic dipped that black just to look a little bit more like an actual roof of a car. Came out really nice. I had also put wheel spacers on to, again, bring out the wheels it a little bit wider. I did a cold air intake, a throttle body spacer, as well as some uh, red leather seat covers. It was a lot, and I did this all in like two weeks, and it was really cool. I had a lot of fun. I think it was, for me, it was like therapy. I was able to not think about anything else and just kind of modify this Jeep, which is cool, but again, didn't really document it for the channel, so there was a lot of missed opportunity there that I should have used which looking back on it now was definitely a big mistake. Um, what also was a big mistake was just spending all that money at once. The Jeep was expensive. It was the most expensive vehicle I'd ever bought. And why you're not seeing the Jeep here today with me it is because, again, I ended up selling it. So the Jeep was just too expensive. Um, it wasn't just the note of actually buying it. It was the gas. It was my daily driver, so I was commuting to work with it. And um, it was just, it was too much. It was too much for me. It didn't really make sense to drive that around on the daily. So I ended up selling the Jeep um, at a loss and buying the cheapest car that I could find, which was a brand new uh, 2021 Nissan Versa S, which is just the base model. And I'll show some pictures of that as well. Um, this for me was kind of like a car low, um, an all time low, because I'd never driven, it sounds kind of pretentious, but I'd never driven like a base model, like cheap car. The purpose of the Nissan Versa is a subcompact, it's tiny. The point of it is to be very cheap and very, good on gas and just an affordable car, right? Which is fine, like people strive off of that. It, may, it makes a lot of sense as a vehicle. But for me, um, I found myself just, I, I wasn't happy in it. It was very slow. It felt downright dangerous on the highway because you're getting blown around, it had no power. The brakes were horrible, it had drum brakes in the back. Um, and it just wasn't a very fun vehicle to drive around in. They did a really good job, I will say, of making it look modern. Um, the interior, while it was bare minimum, it did have like, a touchscreen 
uh, Ray head unit, which had Bluetooth capability, which is which is nice. But again, it was it was very base. And I had kind of decided to, I was going to mod it up, and you know what? Like I was going to own the fact that this is a very cheap car, but I was going to make it cool, make it my own. But as I got into like looking for things, I realized that because it was so new, and again, it's a cheap car that isn't really have an aftermarket market. There wasn't really anything to find to uh, to do to it. They didn't make coilovers. They didn't make springs. Cold air intake didn't exist, wouldn't really do anything. The only thing I can really do is change out the wheels. And again, that's kind of a big amount. It's a kind of a bigger investment, a couple thousand dollars usually to do wheels and tires. And it wouldn't make sense to do it on a car that I couldn't even lower because it wouldn't look right. The fitment would be whack. Um, so I kind of decided to not even modify that car. I wasn't going to do anything with it. Um, basically, the plan was to just save money because the note was so cheap and because it was such a cheap car, I was just going to save up and eventually do another car, which is what I ended up doing in the long run. So that is what brings us to today. I am happy to announce I have a new car. It may surprise you what it is. It may not surprise you, but I'm excited. It's a platform that has endless capabilities. You can take it in a million directions. I got a really good spec um, on the car that I chose as like my canvas, I guess, for starting modifications. And I'm really excited to get back to the channel and go through uh, modifications, car shows, and all kinds of things with you guys again. So I am back. Van Boy Auto Styling is back. Be a lot more consistency with videos. And I guess without further ado, let me introduce you to the new channel car. So this is the new to me 2018 BMW 330i. Yes, it is pretty much the exact same as my last car. It is a F30. Um, the difference is though, is this is the new engine platform that BMW just kind of switched to within the past few years. So this is a B48, or actually a B46 since we're here in North America. Um, four cylinder, two liter turbo. Same displacement, same turbo as the last car. This one does have a little bit more power. And what I really like about it is the engine bay, the engine bay is a lot cleaner and there's a lot more um, power that you can get out of these cars. They're a little bit more reliable and it's just the current BMW engine kind of line. So it's cool to be up to date with that. Interior wise, pretty much identical. This one does have the parking distance uh, help, which I kind of like. I like being able to see how close I'm getting to something, especially with the, uh, the plans that I have for this car. It is also, this one has the M Sport package. So we have the M aerodynamics, as well as the M suspension and the M wheels, which is something that I really wanted in my last car. Um, the last one I had was pretty much base model. So to do the M Sport conversion was gonna cost me about three to four grand to get the pieces, the bumpers, the side skirts to get them all paint matched. And even when you do that, you don't know if it's gonna be exactly matched. So I'm glad that I got a car that does have all of those things already starting out. So for those of you that don't know, this car um, comes factory with 248 horsepower and 258 torque. Again, very minimal difference from the N26 motor, the N20 that I had in my 328. So this one did come with the M Sport package. So it does have the staggered wheels. So they are both, they're 18 inches and it's running a 225 45 up front and a 255 40 in the back for tires. So a little bit of a staggered setup. Um, my goals are to change out the wheels and tires uh, relatively soon after I've done a few other things. And I will be keeping that staggered look, but maybe going up to a 19 because I just think that it looks really good on these cars. It is the 8-speed automatic, uh, the ZF transmission, just like the last one, but I believe it is updated in this car. Um, the shift points are super smooth, and what I can do with this one is I can actually tune the transmission with the, uh, with I think it's a ZHP transmission tune or something like that. There's a company that makes a, uh, a flash, basically, for the transmission to where I can let it know how much power I'm making now and kind of remove torque limiters and things like that, which is something 
Um, I did tune the last car's transmission through boot mode, but I'm not really sure what it did. There wasn't a lot of like uh, versatility or, or things that I could do with that. I just had an updated flash basically for the tune. Which brings me to what I've kind of already done with this car. As you can see from some of those shots, I have done a few things already. Um, basically what I've done is I've put on the in-performance style uh, front bumper lip that I got off of eBay. The fitment's not exactly perfect, but it looks really good. And maybe I'll switch it out later. Maybe I'll keep it on there. I'd really like how it looks though, as it is on there. I have also gone ahead and flashed the car to stage one with boot mode, which was really cool because I was able to just transfer the license to this VIN and not pay anything. So I'd already paid for boot mode and now I have it on the new car as well, which is really cool that I didn't have to pay for that. Um, out of the box, it's saying that it adds about like 16 to 18% horsepower and torque. So doing the math, I think that was around like 270 or something horsepower and almost 300 um, foot-pounds of torque, which is really cool. I'm not stopping here though. Obviously, we're going to do the whole thing. So we will be taking it to stage three further. We'll see what happens. What I did like about this car is it did already come with the windows tinted and it was actually a really good job. The last one was tinted too, but it was turning purple. I think it was some cheap tint. Um, and this one has a nice little sun strip at the top, which I did do a video on the old F30, putting my own kind of vinyl sun strip on there. But I kind of like how this one is tinted. I can still see through it. So I probably won't be doing that to this car. I'll probably, uh, I think I'm gonna kind of dial down a little bit with the decals and stuff. I had kind of gone a little far with the flashy, like silver holographic stuff. So I'm gonna put decals on here, but I'm gonna try to be a little more tasteful with it and kind of just represent maybe some of the mods and things like that um, with the stickers. So what we have coming up next is I will probably go ahead and install the subwoofer um, into this car using referencing my old video that I just, the last video basically on the old F30 of how to do that. So I'll probably throw that into the trunk of this car. Um, and then what's coming up next is I'm gonna go ahead and put spacers on this as well. But what I didn't do in the last car that I'm gonna actually make a video for with this car is doing the wheel stud conversion. So basically instead of the wheel lug bolts um, where when you take them off, the, the wheel falls off, I'm gonna convert it to a traditional stud with a nut. I already bought that kit. Um, and that'll probably be one of the first things I do with this car as well as throw on the spacers. After that, I'm actually waiting for coilovers. I did go ahead and order some coilovers for this car. First time I've ever done that on a vehicle. So it'll be cool to document that. I went with the H&R um, coilover system. It doesn't have adjustable dampening. It just has a uh, height adjustment, but I don't really need adjustable dampening. Again, I, I really only daily this car and drive it on the street, so I don't need it to be too harsh or be able to really adjust that. So I'm excited about that coming in and showing you guys the install of that as well. But yeah, that is pretty much it. This is the new channel car. I'm glad to be back into a BMW and an F30, and I'm excited to share with you guys the journey of uh, where we take this thing. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, uh, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for further videos. And if you want to support the channel again, check out my Etsy shop. I'll link it down below. I make car decals and banners, as well as some t-shirts and beanies now too. So go ahead and check that out. Um, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.